In this video, we're going to look at how to write polynomial functions when given imaginary zeros. We're going to apply the complex conjugates theorem we learned in a previous video. So we want to write the polynomial function of least degree with the given zeros. And remember, imaginary numbers always have a conjugate. So that means if I give you one imaginary number, you need to be able to find the conjugate to get another. And that's where we learned before is that, you know, imaginary zeros come in pairs. And so if I give you one, we have to use the conjugate to find the other. So if we look at the first example, we're given the zeros 3 and 2i. I see I have only one imaginary zero, so I need to create the other imaginary zero by looking at the conjugate. And so the conjugate of 2i is negative 2i. So now I have my zeros. And what's interesting, I see one, two, three zeros. You know, we have a real, we have two imaginary. That tells me my degree after I perform the multiplication and distributing should be three. So let's set up our factors as we've done before. So we have x minus three. We have x minus 2y, and we have x plus 2y. And so the first thing we did is we set up the factors from the zeros, as we've learned, as we've learned in a previous video. So now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute this out to find the polynomial function. Whenever you have imaginary zeros and real zeros together, always distribute out the imaginary together first. And so if I do that, x times x is x squared. x times 2i, we have 2 positive 2ix. Negative 2i times x is negative 2ix. Negative 2i times 2i is negative 4i squared. We can look and see that 2ix and negative 2ix cancel. Those are gone. Remember, i squared is actually negative 1. So really, we have x squared minus 4 times negative 1, which gives me x squared plus 4. And so I multiply my imaginary ones together first, and then I worry about multiplying that by the factor created using the real 0. And so here we're going to distribute as well. We have x times x squared and x times 4. So that gives us x cubed plus 4x. I have negative 3 times x squared and negative 3 times 4. And that gives me negative 3x squared minus 12. Now remember, we have to write our polynomials in standard form. The exponents need to be decreasing. So I can take a look. This negative 3x squared needs to trade places with this positive 4x. So the polynomial is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 12. And so the process is very similar to what we learned before when we were writing the polynomial function when given real zeros. It's just now we're given imaginary zeros. So we need to make sure we have the conjugate. You multiply imaginary ones together first and then distribute in the real to get the polynomial function. So let's try another example. Here, we're given the zeros 3 and 2 plus i. So I see I have an imaginary 0. I need to write down its conjugate as well because that is another 0. So the conjugate of 2 plus i is 2 minus i. Now this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. The factors we're going to set up are x minus 3. And here's where it gets difficult. To set up the factor, you always subtract 
to zero. And so really, I'm going to have x minus the entire expression 2 plus i. So that needs to go inside of a parentheses. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I have x minus my 0. So minus a parentheses 2 minus i. And to see why these parentheses around the complex zeros, 2 plus i and 2 minus i, is extremely important, let's actually distribute it out and see what happens. Because we know we're going to multiply our imaginary ones together first. So I have x minus the quantity 2 plus i, and so this minus sign gets distributed to both. So that's going to give me x minus 2 minus i. If I distribute the minus sign of both here, that's going to give me x minus 2 plus i. I'm still going to, when I'm all done, multiply it by the factor x minus 3, but I still need to distribute this out. So here's where it gets complicated. We have x's, we have i's, we got a 2. We need to make sure we organize our work because the bottom line is when we're dealing with a polynomial function, it's real. We're not going to have any i's. So we're going to have to make sure when we do this, all of our i's cancel out. So let's distribute our x first. And so I'll use a different color for this. So we're going to do x times x, x times negative 2, and x times i. That gives me x squared minus 2x plus ix. And now I'm going to distribute the negative 2. So I get negative 2 times x, negative 2x. I get negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. And negative 2 times i, which is negative 2i. And we still need to get this negative i distributed in. So we're going to get negative i times x, which is negative ix. Negative i times negative 2, which is positive 2i. And then negative i times positive i is negative i squared. That's a lot of terms, but we need to remember, if we did this right, we're going to see a lot of these i's cancel. So we have a positive ix. I look over here, there's the negative ix. So these cancel. I have a negative 2i. I have a positive 2i right next to it. And so let me just combine some terms. Let me clean this up because I don't I see this i squared, but remember we know i squared is negative 1. So really we have minus a negative 1, which changes this to a plus 1. So really I have x squared. I have minus 2x minus 2x, which is minus 4x. I have positive 4, and this is a positive 1, which gives me plus 5. And so that is the trinomial created by multiplying out the factors x minus the quantity 2 plus i and x minus quantity 2 minus i. We still need to take into consideration that x minus 3 factor created by using the real zero. So we're going to bring that down. And we're going to distribute through here. So if we take a look, we're going to have x times x squared, which is x cubed, x times negative 4x, which is negative 4x squared, x times 5 is 5x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x squared, negative 3 times negative 4x is positive 12x, and negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. When we combine like terms, we see x cubed is all by itself. Negative 4x squared and negative 3x squared is negative 7x squared. 5x plus 12x is 17x. And we have minus 15. And so that is the polynomial written in standard form created from the zeros 3, 2 plus i, and we found the conjugate 2 minus i for this one. So one last one, and it's very similar where we have a complex zero with 2 plus i. 
So I'm going to use the conjugate, which is 2 minus 3i. I'm going to set up my factors. So I have x minus 2. The complex ones are more complicated. So we have x minus the quantity 2 plus 3i. And x minus the quantity 2 minus 3i. We are going to focus on getting the complex ones all simplified first. So we distribute this out and we get x minus 2 minus 3i, x minus 2 plus 3i. And then we distribute it out. The x is going to be distributed to all the terms. So we have x times x, x times negative 2, and x times 3i. That is going to give me x squared minus 2x plus 3ix. And remember, the key here is to organize since our imaginaries are going to cancel. Negative 2 times x, negative 2 times negative 2, and negative 2 times 3i. So that's negative 2x plus 4 minus 6i. Last one to distribute is the negative 3 times x, negative 3ix, negative 3i times negative 2, which is positive 6i, and negative 3i times 3i is negative 9i squared. Now let's combine and simplify. We see we have a positive 3ix here. I have a negative 3ix here. Those are going to cancel. I have a negative 6i and a positive 6i. Those are going to cancel. So when I combine my terms, I have x squared. Minus 2x and minus 2x is minus 4x. I have plus 4 minus 9i squared. We have negative 9 times i squared, which is negative 1, which is a positive 9. So we have 4 plus 9, which is 13. So I have the trinomial x squared minus 4x plus 13. That still needs to be multiplied by my 0 of 2, so the factor of x minus 2. And so I distribute it out. x is going to be distributed to all the terms. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 4x is negative 4x squared. x times 13 is 13x. We also have negative 2 times x squared, which is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 4x, which is positive 8x. And then negative 2 times 13 is negative 26. Combine your like terms, you're going to get x cubed minus 6x squared plus 21x minus 26. And that is the polynomial function created by using our zeros 2, 2 plus 3i, and the conjugate 2 minus 3i.